Greetings, Eric Backer, New Zealand naturopath, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Candida range of products. Thanks for checking out my video. Today we're going to talk about the five steps towards a successful parasite cleanse. So what you can do in able to clean up your body if you've got parasites. This is going to work for Candida but even more specifically for parasites. This is a particularly useful video if you've been diagnosed with parasites, a positive diagnosis especially after a stool analysis. Now I want you to be very careful with, with many kinds of tests when it comes to the determination of parasites in Candida. I've had an, an amazing amount of people that have contacted me over the years uh, that have said, I've been diagnosed with Candida. I'm full of this stuff. I've got to get rid of it. I'm sick of having all this yeast in my body. I've got worms. I've got parasites. And, and I'll say, oh, hang on, hold on. How did you find out about this? Oh, well, a guy told me he had one of these little dowsing pendulums and hung it over my belly and said, I've got worms crawling around inside me. Or, or another person may say, well, a guy hooked me up to all this, this machine. I had wires hanging off me everywhere, one of these biofeedback machines. And, or another person may say, I had it done via muscle testing or kinesiology. So there are many different methods, but the only method, in my opinion, that's scientifically validated and that can really nail the parasite determination is PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Okay, It's a special DNA testing to determine that if stuff inside you actually is a parasite or not. All right, So be very careful if someone tells you something because it may be a load of crap. All right, Do you believe everything you say? I certainly don't. Just be very careful what you're being told by people. A stool analysis performed by a, a lab that will do PCR technology, yes or no. Okay, so just remember that before we go further. So this video is for those who have determined they actually have got parasites. So what you believe to have or have been told may be far from the truth from what reality is, okay? I've been told a lot of weird stuff over the years, but you know, whether it was reality or not, I've got to use common sense. So let's look at the five steps. Step one is preparation, okay? I look like Donald Trump doing this. Have you seen Donald Trump doing this on the video on TV? I won't do that anymore. So preparation is everything when it comes to doing anything in life, whether it's come to getting married or it's come to starting a new business or, or anything. You need to have some kind of plan and prepare yourself properly for what you're about to going to do. Now, there's no different from doing a parasite cleanse. So preparation. What's the point in trying to get rid of parasites if you're going to have three glasses of wine every Friday night? But I've cut back. I don't drink anymore during the week. You can't take wine away from me on Friday nights. Well, if that's how you feel, turn the video off. There's no point watching any further. If you can't forego these kinds of treats like chocolates and McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and gin and tonic and Mars bars and all that crap, you know, that you may be eating, you know, there's no point going any further. Preparation is paramount. I want you to really understand that this is part of my Candida Crusher protocol. What I try and do first for the first couple of weeks is I do what's called the big cleanup. It's get people off crap, get them off crap in their diet, all right? Stuff like alcohol, stuff like caffeine, stuff like crap that you know that you shouldn't be eating. Now, you know inside, in your own heart, what you should and shouldn't be eating. I don't need to tell you that. The doctor doesn't need to tell you that. Your husband or wife don't need to tell you that. Your next door neighbor doesn't need you. you know, all right? And if you don't know, please check out some of my other videos, but also have a good look at yeastinfection.org because there's many articles I've written and many videos I've done on the correct way to eat. I've also done videos on the big cleanup. So, all right, so get rid of the junk out of your diet. That's stage number one, is preparation. If you're drinking even once a month, stop it. You're not gonna get rid of parasites by you know doing all these kinds of things. Preparation is paramount, right? I want you to eat a basic, common sense, healthy kind of diet. Vegetables, okay, low-fat meats, grains are acceptable, all right? Again, check out my other videos on grains and starches and things like that. I've done a lot of work on that. So if you're not prepared to do the preparation, turn the video off and go and look at funny cat videos or something, all right? Because this is not for you. So let's assume that you've done the preparation. You're eating a good food. You're eating a healthy diet. You're making good choices. And also, let's assume that you're serious about parasite cleanse, because you may not be, all right? So you've got to be serious. So preparation is number one. Number two is the actual cleanse itself, all right? So now we're actually going to get into eating particular kinds of foods. They're going to facilitate and help that process along.
Now you may think what I'm about to say is a load of crap, but from based on my clinical experience, it's not. I want you to pay uh, attention to the moon cycle and aggravation of symptoms. Now I know for a fact from my clinical experience that many patients I see with parasites get worse in the week leading up to full moon. Don't ask me why, but I've seen it. I've read it in many books. I've talked to many expert people who say they've also noticed some similar things happening. So you may find uh, if you start paying attention to that, that what I'm saying is correct. Right? So obviously a really good time to increase certain types of spices and foods in your diet to facilitate removal okay, or the cleanse is to do it in the week leading up to the full moon. All right. Is this science? Maybe not. Is it mumbo jumbo? Definitely not. There's a lot to be said about growing plants and sowing seeds to the moon cycle. There's a lot to be said about harvesting wood for firewood for the moon cycle. But I also know parasites, it makes a big difference. So particularly the week leading up, I find there's heightened activity. You can read more about that in Candida Crush. I've written a whole section on that on, on the moon cycle. Okay, But just a tip, if you're going to um, increase stuff, you know, have a look before full moon because it could make a little bit of a difference. So let's look at some of the extra foods you can add into your diet that really help to annoy the hell out of parasites, all right? Now I assume you understand what parasites are. If not, check out my other videos. I did one a few days ago on uh, how, you know, the 10 signs of parasite infection. I've done other parasite videos on blastocystis and things like that. So please check those out. I, I assume you already know what parasites are. Parasites are not worms crawling through your intestines, okay? Parasites, in most cases, you can't even see them. They're so tiny and microscopic, all right? Very difficult to determine. So parasites are all around us. So the cleanse itself, food. Food is your medicine and medicine is your food. Now, if you look at work done by Dr. Holder Clark, for example, Parasite Cleanse, she talks about things like black walnut. She talks about clove, okay? Now, these are things that you can take into your diet. Don't buy the bloody things. Just Go out to the local Asian store or grocery store <coughs> and buy some cloves. You know the little black spice cloves? The stuff they put in cookies or in cakes and things like that? Not garlic cloves, but clove, the black spice clove. Clove is very, very good for candida, clove tea, but also to put just in cooking. I'll throw cloves in a lot of different types of dishes I make. So very, very good anti-parasite kind of a, a herb to use, a spice to use. Cinnamon is good to use. Quasia, another herb you can get called quasia. These are things you can buy at the grocery store. You can add them to your diet. Okay, Pumpkin seeds, very, very good, especially before full moon. Have about a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds per day. Chew on them really well. They work particularly well on worms, but they also have an affinity on other kind of parasites as well. So think about that. Grated beetroot and grated carrot, 50-50, mixed together. Yes, beetroot is okay with a yeast infection. Yes, grated raw carrot is okay with candida, all right? And particularly effective against parasites. So small quantity every day, ongoing for several weeks. is a fantastic food. Cultured and fermented foods, a good quality sour yogurt, maybe some kefir, okay, very good. Coconut kefir, very, very good. Water kefir, even more powerful. Be careful with kefir. Check out my video on kefir. Make sure it's made properly because it make, could make you sick instead of healthy. Lots of people stuff up kefir cultures all the time. They don't make them properly. So if you're going to make your own culture or fermented, make sure it's done properly. Right? So those are good building foods. You need good killing foods. You need good inhibition foods. Okay, And you need good killing foods. I don't often use the word killing, but with parasites I do. Right? Parasites can be killed off effectively in the body by taking away their food source. That's the number one, the preparation, remember? And they can be inhibited and killed by using the treatment phase, which is stage two. Okay, so you've got to stop giving them food, and you've got to start annoying the hell out of them with, with spices and herbs and take their food source away, and then put some supplements in there, which are going to help to eradicate them, right? Now, how long does it take to get rid of a parasite in the body? How long do I have to do step two, the treatment phase? Well, that really depends. How long is a piece of rope? Is it three inches? Is it three meters? That depends on the extent of the parasite infection, depends how long you've been sick for, depends on other health complaints you've got, and depends on a lot of factors. I always say to people, you need to treat as long as it takes to get well. All right? So keep an eye on the symptoms. So garlic, as I mentioned, but also onions, chives, shallots, that whole allium family is quite good to consume. Um, steamed or partially raw is better. 
okay? Many different foods you can do, but even basic green stuff like brassicas, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, these are all really good foods to have because they aid in liver detoxification. They, they include in, um, improve the glucuronidation or phase two for liver. So a lot of pe people malalign brassicas like cauliflower and broccoli say that they stuff up the thyroid function, which is a load of crap. I've talked about that in a previous video. Raw kale is what you should not eat, all right? Cooked kale's fine, but raw kale is no good. Steamed broccoli is perfectly fine. And I have it on very expert authority that these kind of foods do not ruin your thyroid function, okay? People take everything out of context uh, when they go to Dr. Google. So with, with food, go more into my Candida Crusher approach. It's a three-stage dietary approach. This is perfect for parasite cleansing. We talked about the big cleanup first, okay? Then we're gonna talk about the Mevy diet. You can see that in another video, M-E-V-Y, meat, eggs, vegetables, yogurt, Mevy diet. And then the third stage is the low allergy diet, the hypoallergenic um, phase. Okay. And then we, we do a, sorry, that's the second phase. Then we do a reintroduction. That's number three. So check out my Candida Crusher eating approach, which is perfect for step two, the cleanse. Right? Also, what I want you to do is to take some dietary supplements. Now, it's not mandatory, but supplements have a very good effect on eradicating parasites when taken properly in the correct dosage. All right? Now, watch my video I've done on the 242 protocol. Okay, this is not my idea. The 242 protocol uh, was designed by a very clever friend of mine, Dr. Joseph Collins in America, a really wonderful doctor who does incredible work, uh, particularly with hormones in women. So Dr. Collins suggested a 242 protocol, which I think is a fantastic idea. Two weeks introduction, and then there's the four, which you know usually means four weeks, but it could be in two months. That's the treatment phase. And then the other two is the coming out phase. Introduction, treatment, reintroduction or coming out. Reintroduction is a normal diet and coming out of supplement treatment phase. So if any practitioner tells you to take supplements continually for a long period of time without this 242 protocol, it's, there's no real rhyme or reason to that. Every person should have a slow introduction of a supplement who's got a parasite problem. Then they should ramp it up to their tolerance level, what you can tolerate which could be low, medium, or high. And then when they keep treating and treating and treating along their intolerance level, they'll find that usually over time they can increase the product a little bit more, which pushes the kill and inhibition further. And then they can slowly back off as symptoms improve. They can back off more and more and more and more and more and they can back right off. And then slowly they slide into the second two, which is the coming out phase. Then they go back to a lower dosage. Does it make sense? Makes sense to me. Start off slow build up to your tolerance, find out what it is, keep treating it, slowly back off and then go into a, a coming out phase, okay? Canzita remove, Canzita restore, Canzita rebuild. The, the three Canzita products are perfect for people with parasites. You can check that out at canzita.com. Canzita remove is incredibly good for many different types of parasites. I've had feedback now from people in many countries around the world who've had a very successful um, you know, eradication with blastocystis and nine amoeba and many other kinds of parasites, many of them. So give that a go, all right? So that's step two, is the cleanse. How long does it last? Eric, you're not giving us specific timelines. Well, I can't, because I don't know you particularly as a patient. If I knew you as a patient, or I'd seen you, I could give you a pretty darn good guideline, uh, which is usually reasonably accurate. Okay, and a lot of it depends on your stool test results and your previous history. But my advice is to keep treating in step two until you feel better and better and better. All right? It could be one month, it could be six months. It really depends on a lot of factors, as I say. Step three, reintroduction of foods. Okay, now you need to come back to normal again. That doesn't mean to say that when you improve, you rush out to McDonald's and you start having Happy Meals every day. It doesn't mean to say that you can drink three cans of beer every night, you know, while you're playing Xbox. All right? It means that you need to reintroduce foods slowly. All right? Does that make sense? Slowly reintroduce the foods that you're eating prior. Now, remember, I want you to maintain a healthy, clean diet from this point forward. That's going to go a big step towards uh, stopping you from getting sick again with parasites. All right? It's going to keep improving your gut health. It can take a year for your digestion to get to a very high state of health. 
There's a huge surface area with a lot trillions of bacteria inside here. It's like a big lawn. Okay, it can take a long time for a garden to become beautiful. I know that from experience. I love gardening. It takes years for a garden to become absolutely stunning. Lots of little bits of work here and there, a bit of weeding here and there. Okay, sometimes you've got to pull stuff out. And the, the digestive system is no different. You've got to keep weeding it and feeding it and looking after it. It takes time. Please be patient. There's that finger again. All right. Step four, assessment long term. Okay. So what I want you to do long term, as you improve, which you should, is to assess your state of health on a regular basis. So there would have been a reason why you went into the parasite cleanse. Now there could have been of diarrhea, could have been constipation, could have been bloating, could have been gas. It could have been one of a hundred reasons. Check out my video if you haven't, please, on the ten signs that you may have a parasite infection. All right? If you improve with a parasite problem, all those things should disappear. There should be no itchy skin. There should be no headaches, no muscle fatigue, no joint pain. The bowel should work perfect. There should be no bloating at all. There should be minimal gas. Well, everyone farts, but you shouldn't be farting like a horse or a dog, okay? You should be farting a small amount. It's normal, all right? So these things will become apparent to you as you improve. And if they're not apparent to you, they'll be apparent to your partner or friends or people around you who may say, wow, you're looking good lately. What have you been doing? Have you had Botox? Have you had a holiday? Have you got a new man or a new woman? Or, you know, have you won the lotto or whatever? But if people come up with a statement like that, it usually implies that you are definitely improving in health, even though you may not think so yourself. So long-term assessment, very clever. Perhaps another stool test, okay? Six months down the track, repeat the stool test. Maybe you don't need the comprehensive test. Maybe you just need to do the bacteriology and the parasitology panel. It's a couple hundred bucks. File both of those test reports away, the first one and the second one. Because down the track, if there's any recurrence, you pull it out, bang, you know, you've got a pretty good idea what's going on. Right? Remember, test and measure. Treat and then measure the response. That's what intelligent people do. That's step four, assessment long term. Step five, the last step, is prevention. Why would you want to go back to feeling like crap again? Why would you want bloating and gas and headaches and, you know, feeling terrible? Nobody wants to live like that. I wouldn't want to live with someone like that. It'd be awful. So prevention. Now remember, washing your hands, hygiene, okay? Especially if you travel. I'm very careful when I do air travel. I'm not anal and like, you know, I don't wear gloves on airplanes and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I mean, some people do crazy things. You know, they put masks on their face all the time, and they. I've seen people on aircraft wear gloves and like all this kind of stuff. That's a kind of Michael Jackson kind of phobia. You don't need to be like that. What you do need to do is wash your hands. Many people don't. They go from the bathroom, you know, straight out and will shake your hand. All right. So not a good idea. So I think if you travel a lot, like I used to, in particular, uh, with my air travel is I'd always wash my hands once or twice at the airport, and particularly when I was on the plane again, maybe if, when I disembark, go through customs, and I'm going out, I'd, I'd go to the lavatory, wash my hands again. So these are important things to do, because you're touching all kinds of surfaces. You've been around all people who've been in many different countries. You don't know what you're dealing with. Every time you eat, you wash your hands. You be very careful, okay? So common sense, common sense. That's prevention. If you have got a tummy that can be a bit on the funny side and you are going to go, go traveling, maybe take some Kenzita Remove with you in particular and Kenzita Restore. Just take one tablet per day. That's going to go a long way towards prevention you know, um, of sickness. So I hope this video gives you a little bit of an insight into what I would consider the five steps uh, on you know, how to eradicate parasites. I'll just quickly go through them again. Preparation, we spoke about. The cleanse itself. Diet lifestyle, some supplements. Step three, reintroduce foods again. Step four, assessment, you know, uh, long-term health, what you've got now and, you know, what you've had, where you're going to. And step five is prevention. Make sense? Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't got my report, please cl click on the link below and get your free report. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it.